Hi, Colleen Patrick Adro here, Joyful Vegan. I wanted to address a topic that comes up a lot for me that people ask me about a lot, especially when I travel. And thank goodness we're starting to travel more. And I host vegan trips around the world through Joyful Vegan Trips. And so this topic comes up a lot. We also travel domestically. My husband and I have a goal to sleep in every county in California. And so we'll do a lot of short trips, weekend trips, but we also do longer trips for three weeks at a time when we travel with our Joyful Vegan travelers. So it's a topic I want to address and it's something I hear a lot from people is this kind of presumption that you don't have to worry as much about cats as you would dogs, especially when you're traveling. So whenever I tell people, neighbors, friends, acquaintances, strangers, what, what have you, that um, we're going away, the first question we're asked, one of the first questions we're asked is, so w what do you do with your cats? Who takes care of your cats? Where do they go? Wh who comes in? Do you, how do you handle it? And of course, this is a question we would all get, whether we have dogs or cats. But what often follows is a, kind of an assumption that, especially if it's for a short trip, that we don't have to worry as much about them. That if you just put some food down and you have litter boxes for them, then the cats can virtually take care of themselves. Now, I don't mean to imply that the people saying that are, or asking that are implying that it's okay to neglect your cats. So I don't think that's what people are saying when they say that. But there is this, this notion, and I would say myth, that um, that cats are easier to take care of than dogs. And I hear that from people a lot. I hear that rhetoric a lot from people who would say things like, yeah, I wanted to get a dog, but I just got cats because they're easier. Now I'll concede that cats are easier in the sense that they use litter boxes. And that does make things easier in terms of not having to walk them several times a day or take them outside several times a day. But in every other way, <laughs> like these are living beings in my care who rely on me and depend on me for making sure that they are happy and safe and, and healthy. And that means more than just having a clean litter box and having food put down for them. So I wanted to address this because when I tell people I am, you know, we're going away, I think people think I'm a little nutty when I tell them that we have house sitters who come to the house and stay at the house because my cats have never slept alone at night ever. I, whether it was my previous cats or the cats I have now or any combination thereof because they overlapped, um, my cats have never slept alone overnight. And, I've, and, and that's by design because I know these cats, I know their habits every single day and I know how affectionate they are and how social they are and how bonded they are to me and to people. The notion that, that there wouldn't be someone there at night with them is heartbreaking to me, truly. And I know that, that, that when people hear that, they think that sounds crazy. But if you told someone that you left your dog overnight, they would say, okay, that's bordering on neglect and abuse. <laughs> right? But somehow people think that if you're leaving your cat overnight, that that's the most normal thing in the world. Okay, let, let me back up a little bit and say, if you leave your cat overnight, I'm not saying that's abuse or neglect. The implication is that that's the default and that anything else other than that is weird. And so again, people are not saying that if you left your, if, if, if you told someone that you left your cat alone for a week while you went out of town, I think people would raise an eyebrow and question that. But if you tell people that you leave your cat overnight or two nights, uh, you know, and someone comes in maybe to check on them and just um, make sure they're, they're fed, you know, then people don't raise an eyebrow. But people do raise an eyebrow when I tell them that we have people stay here. And so to answer the question is I take very seriously when we go away. It's not easier to have cats in the sense that I want to make sure that they have company, that they have attention, that they have affection, that they have the social aspects of their needs met. Um, so we always have the house sitters stay. We always have people stay. Now, it depends on where we're going, how long we're going for. Sometimes we do a trade with people. Sometimes we've had friends stay. Sometimes we've hired cat sitters. Uh, it really depends. And I'd be very curious to know what you do and, and how you handle it. But when what we do typically is as soon as I book a trip, the first thing I do is try and, sec well, not try, the first thing I do is, is work to secure someone staying here at the house. 
And that could be people who have stayed in the past. That could be friends. It, I could tap into my neighborhood. Uh, it's what I did for the most recent trip that we had and the most recent trip that's coming is I ask neighbors if they have fam family or friends who are cat lovers who are looking for a place to stay for any length of time, uh, who may be visiting you, but who you know wouldn't want to spend the money on a hotel. But they would like to spend the time in a lovely home with adorable cats. And so that's usually how I started or I tap into friends. There's also a service that a friend of mine has used several times called Trusted House Sitters. I've not used it, but she raved about it. And I don't want to say much more about it here because I haven't used it yet, but I'd be curious to know if you've heard of it or have used it. And there are other different pet sitting organizations as well. Of course, some people board their cats. I, I know that, and you would agree, that cats would be much happier in their home and be less stressed. But if in the case of a cat who needs medical attention uh, or you can't find someone to stay at your house, of course, if they're going to be in the care of, you know, vet techs and people who know what they're doing, then of course that's that's a viable option. But for me, I'm very grateful. We've been very lucky to have found very good people who I interview, who I make sure meet the cats, who I vet, who I'm discerning about, who I send eight pages of information to uh, regarding how to take care of them, anticipating every single possible scenario. I send them videos before we go, showing them how the kitties like to play and where their hiding spaces places are and how they like to lie and how they like to be petted. I mean, all of these things are considerations for our cats. Does that sound crazy and obsessive? I don't think so. I think it means that I'm attentive and mindful of, of the needs of my, of my cats. Now, obviously, every cat is unique and individual. Uh, so you may say, no, my cat really is aloof. They don't really care if there's anybody around. They're fine for a few nights. That might be true. And so this is not a judgment of that. This is an answer to a question that I get and also a clarification of a myth that I think exists uh, that, that, that cats aren't social. Uh, cats may not be pack animals the way dogs are pack animals, but they are companion animals. That's why we have them as companions. They are social animals. Otherwise, this agreement would never have worked. <laughs> before like the reason cats are in our lives domestic cats are in our lives is because it works for them and it works for us and so they are social beings so all that's to say is what do we do we make sure our cats have someone to stay with them here at the house sleep with them overnight and and make sure they're taking care of all their needs it's funny when i've had people st stay and we have these conversations sometimes they say well i'm going to be at the house most of the time because i'm going to be working from home but i i will probably leave just to go to the store is that, is that okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's definitely okay that you leave the house. <laughs> like, it's not to say you can't leave the house, although I don't really leave the house because I work from home and I like staying in my house, but I do leave the house. I do leave the house. I'm joking, I do leave the house. Uh, but the cats are very used to people being around all the time. So all, all cats are different, all cats are individual. We all know the personalities of our, of our own cats. Uh, but generally speaking, they are social animals, they are companions, and they do bond to their people. And they absolutely get lonely, and they can absolutely get depressed, and they can absolutely uh, feel sad if they are alone for any length of time. So. Whether you're a cat person or not, whether you're a dog person, and whether you still think that's nutty that cats don't need that level of care, doesn't matter. It's my video, and I wanted to just convey that message. <laughs> Say, cats are individuals with their own personalities and preferences, and obviously those of us who live with the individual cats know what they prefer. And for me, I know my cats love to be with people and I love to get the videos and the photos and the updates showing me them interacting with the people who are staying here. So I'm curious, what do you do when you go away? Do you have someone stay? Do you have someone just come in and check on them? Where do you find folks? Do you have resources you'd like to share? Because I'd love to pass them on to my peeps because people ask me this all the time. As I said, Trusted House Sitters is one to check out and I'm, I know there are others. Uh, I tap into our neighborhood listserv. What do you do when you go away? And I hope you find uh, a reason to go away. I hope you join us on one of our Joyful Vegan trips. They really are the most incredible trips. You can go to joyfulvegantrips.com to see what trips we have coming up. But make sure you message me. You can comment below or you can send me a DM or a comment email through joyfulvegan.com. Thanks so much for your time for the animals. This is Colleen Patrick-Gaudreau. Thanks for watching.